Hey guys, Missy Step here. Um, I'm so excited to be your psychology teacher. I'm so excited to teach psychology for the first time. Um, this will be a learning process for me as well because it's been about 10 years since I've taken the course myself. So we will both be learning along the way and it's going to be awesome. So first and foremost, we're gonna be taking about three weeks on chapter one because these are the foundations of psychology. What is psychology? You have to understand this um, in order to understand um, more fully what we're gonna talk about in the upcoming weeks. So our focus for section one, chapter one, is how our behavior and mental process is different. Um, what are some of the basic goals of psychology and how is psychology a science? Well, psychology in and of itself is the scientific study of human behavior and mental processes. Behavior and mental processes are different. How are they different? Well, behavior is any action that people can observe and measure, like us walking, talking, pressing a switch, turning a light on and off, turning left, turning right. If we sleep, if we eat, if we drink something, um, automatic body functions like heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, um, brain activity, those are things that can be measured. Behavior is measured through observation or scientific instruments, such as brain activity and heart rate. Your heart rate can be monitored um, by a machine, right? Um, some of us even have heart rate monitors on our watches. Brain activity can be um, measured through MRIs, through PET scans, through CAT scans. Um, and so, what is a cognitive activity or a mental process? Okay, guys, these are different because these cannot be measured. They are private processes that only the beholder can experience. What are those things? They include dreams, your thoughts, your perceptions about life, other people, um, and things and your memories, only you can dictate your memories, right? Um, how you felt during an experience, only you experience that. Um, and our memory of the same event can be different because we both have different experiences. Um, but now there is a time when behavior and mental processes overlap, psychologists, like to study human feelings and emotions. Emotions affect both our behavior and our mental processes. Um, for an example, you've got to give a report in your psychology class. You get anxious. You don't like standing in front of your classmates. Um, your heart's racing. You cannot do this report. You've got so much anxiety. Your heart racing that's measurable behavior. We can tell that based off of looking at your smartwatch and telling that your heart rate is up above 120. Um, however, your thoughts and anxiety about giving this report, that's private mental process. That's a private mental process um, that can't be observed or measured. The only time it can be observed is if you tell me, all right? This is where a psychological construct comes in. A construct are things that we use to talk about something that cannot be seen or touched or directly measured, like aggression, like anxiety, okay, like depression. Um, those are psychological constructs we use to talk about how we feel, okay? Um, the goals of psychology. These psychologists are scientists. They seek to observe, describe, explain, and predict, and hopefully control the events that they study. Um, psychologists observe and describe behavior and mental processes in order to better understand them. The process that allows psychologists to explain 
and predict can help psychologists help their clients control their behavior, okay? Um, psychologist's goal is to explain pe why people behave in certain ways at certain times, all right? If you think about Alad Rod Rodriguez or A-Rod, right, from the New York Yankees, he became known as being the highest paid athlete in sports history and the youngest player in baseball to fit, hit 500 home runs. Um, he was player of the year in 2000 and 2002, and he was also known for his inability to produce hits in the postseason. Um, in a postseason game against the Red Sox, A-Rod hit a ground ball to the pitcher for an easy out. He then swatted the ball out of the pitcher's glove, a clear violation of the rules, all right? Aggression, frustration, okay? He was tagged out and booed off the field. All right, what a sports psychologist would do would help A-Rod and other athletes like him by measuring their heart rate and other bodily processes to determine anxiety levels. Um, anxiety is a good and a bad thing. Um, a little anxiety can motivate a player. However, too much anxiety um, can make a player distracted and shaky and ineffective in the game, okay? So psychologists try to predict how patients will respond in certain situations um, and give them coping methods to try to control their behavior. So a sports psychologist predict that athletes perform their best when their anxiety is at a moderate level. They then work with these athletes to help change and control their behavior by teaching them ways of keeping their anxiety at bay, like positive vis visualization. A-Rod could have pictured himself hitting a home run every time he got up in the postseason. All right, so that's what a um, sports psychologist would have told him to do. A psychologist's job is to use the knowledge they have about human behavior to help people accomplish their own goals, okay? Um, it's a social science, but it also has its foundations in natural sciences. It, it's a social science because it deals with human beings and human society and the nature and interactions of those individuals. But it's also a natural science because it's concerned with the nature of the physical world, how the brain works when we behave in certain ways or when we have certain feelings. Um, psychologists study the functions of the brain, which are a part of natural science or biology and chemistry even. Um, you know, when we think about things like anxiety and depression or bipolar disorder, we think about chemical imbalances in the brain. Um, they also seek to answer questions using scientific processes, such as the scientific method, all right? When they conduct surveys and research and experiments, um, also when they're collecting and analyzing data and drawing conclusions. Um, psychological research takes on many forms. Um, psychologists can conduct surveys. Um, that involves asking people questions. They can also conduct experiments within a lab um, that could involve human participation or animal participation. Some animals used in research include gorillas. I know you've all heard rats, pigeons, sea snails. Um, the biological functioning of these animals and their psychological responses are often similar to those of people. Um, that's why they study those animals. Um, an example of this is by studying the nerve cells of a squid, psychologists have been able to learn about the workings of the human nervous system. Um, and only by studying humans can psychologists learn about unique human qualities, such as morality, the belief in what's right and what's wrong, um, love and values, okay? Um, a psychological theory, theory is important. Um, because it's an organization of psychological research about behavior and mental processes. It's a statement that is going to attempt to explain why things are the way they are and why they happen the way that they do. Um, theories discuss
principles that govern behavior and a principle is a basic truth or law. An example of a basic truth or law is if you study, you will get better grades. Um, if you exercise, you will feel better. Um, those are basic principles. Theories include statements about behavior, about mental processes, and about biological processes. Remember, behavior um, would be like sleeping or aggression. Mental processes would be like your memories or your dreams or those mental images that you store. And then biological processes are the chemicals of the brain, right? Or those um, nervous system. Useful psych psychological theories allow psychologists to predict behavior and mental processes so that they can better help their patients or their clients um, deal with and cope with um, the things that they are seeking help with and help them to achieve their goals. So going back to our focus and our reflection, behavior and mental processes are different because remember, behavior can be measured. Whereas mental processes can't, they're in the eye of the beholder. The goals of psychology are to better understand humans and human behavior and mental processes in order to help people achieve their goals and reduce human suffering. Um, psychology is a science because it deals with understanding people and their interactions with others, as well as their mental processes. Okay, so thank you guys so much for listening to lesson one. I look forward to um, conducting lesson two with you. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye.